Clive Waring has one of the worst cases of amnesia in the world. I know it's like we did now. Day and night, the same, blank. No difference in dreams or anything like that. No senses at all. The brain has been totally inactive. No dreams and no thoughts of any kind, whatever. Clive was a renowned conductor living in London when he was struck down by a virus in 1985. Parts of his brain were completely destroyed, including his memory. However, his ability to play music is unaffected. Do you feel different when you play music? I've never heard a note since I've been ill. I don't know what it's like to play music. When you're unconscious. You played us some music about two minutes ago. Not known to me. Totally unknown. I've never heard a note yet. Clive's case became known to millions when a television documentary was made about him in 1986. Alone and confused in hospital, without his memory, the only person he recognised was his wife, Deborah. What's been wrong? Can you test him what the illness has been? I, mean, I really can't get through this. Sort of but I'm I... actually conscious now yes. for the first time. I just want to find out what the bloody hell they've been doing, what's been wrong with me. Because I have not a fucking clue. Well, this I've never is... seen anyone at all. 20 years later, Clive only has a seven-second memory before his mind goes blank. What has life been like for Clive and his family? planning a momentous trip for Clive. Where would, you, where would you like to go? Best pub in the country. If you could go anywhere, where would you like to go? No idea. No idea. Well, I'm going to take you home. Oh, I see. Oh, that's marvellous, yes. <laughs> Do you know where home is? No. Yes. Uh, yesterday. Home is yesterday? <laughs> yes, that's, also not, today. That's, yeah. that's not a bad answer, actually. <laughs> home is yesterday. That's true. Yes, and home stops. is also next Tuesday. Oh, I see. <laughs> and we're going... I live in Reading. Oh, I see. You ever been It looks been like reading, the way it spells, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you think you've ever been to Reading? Yes, I have been. Uh, have you? Yes. I've been to almost every city there was never I suppose time. you could have gone when Howard was studying there. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know you'd ever been there. Yes, it's you never familiar. mentioned Reading. No, it's not. It's not a very interesting place. I have a memory of going there. Yeah, yeah, not a very interesting place. No. 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 Can you name a town in Berkshire? No, I can't. I can't remember the geography. Do you know where I live? There. No. Should guess. I've no idea. Begins with R. I've no idea. Reading. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Spelt wrong. It should be Reading. <laughs> Clive is going home for the first time in 13 years. Do you remember the car your parents drove, your father drove? No, I can't remember. It's all gone. You remember the number plate? EON 941. EON 941? Yeah. You do? But I can't remember the car. Do you remember the phone number when you were a little boy? 3164. Yeah. Remarkably, Clive can still recall details from his childhood numbers embedded in his memory before he became ill. There's another guest expected for lunch, Clive's youngest son, Edmund, who has not seen his father for seven years. The things that I used to do with my father um, always revolved around his work. It was, we'd be either going to see, going to places such as the British Museum for his research, or we'd be going to concert venues or recording venues, uh, we would often end up in churches. And he could walk into a church or a cathedral anywhere in Europe and read it like a book. He had a vast amount of knowledge, and that's just been wiped out. It, it's been a difficult time. Today, Clive's sister Adele has come to see him. And we used to take his children to see him, but he used to get very aggressive, he was very angry, 
you know, there was one occasion when I went to see him on my own and he, he just, when I said who I was, he, he attacked me almost, you know, grabbed hold of me very aggressively. And the staff came in and sort of calmed it down. But he'd remembered me when I was younger. He just said, no, you know, you're too old. Oh, that's all four of us, is it? Yeah. That's, that's, what, that's what Adele looked like. when. She, how old do you think you all were then? I'm 10 or 11. Really. I, I think I'm about four there, actually. About mm. four? Yeah, so you're about nine or ten, then. Yeah. Mm. And how... Jeff looked enormous compared with us. And he went off to sea when he was 15, didn't he? Yes, he went to the Merchant Navy. Yeah, but the ships travel really quite slowly compared with the aircraft, don't they? Oh, very slowly, yeah. yes. Yeah. I, I used to go and visit him. I found it just so difficult. Um, and, and not easy to talk to him at all. My husband, who'd got no connection with him, found it much easier. He could talk about things that were totally irrelevant and quite happily carry on a conversation with him, but I have always found that extremely difficult thing to do. Oh, shame. It's been lovely to see you. <laughs> I must have seen you than see me. Yeah, but see you. <laughs> all right. Oh, wonderful. Bye-bye for now. All right. OK. You stay there and I'll... You open the door? I will. You going? I'm going. Oh, shame. <laughs> bye bye. Back at the speed of light, please. <laughs> I'll do my best. Bye. Isn't she wonderful? <laughs> do you remember Adele sitting next to no. you? No. Can you remember what she was wearing? No. Never seen her. You're the first human beings I've seen, three of you. Two men and one lady, the first piece of people I've seen since I've been ill. No difference in day and night, no thoughts at all, no dreams. Day and night, the same blank. Precisely like death. Is it very hard? No. It's exactly the same as being dead, which is not difficult, is it? To be dead is easy. You don't do anything at all. You can't do anything when you're dead. It's been the same. Exactly. Do you miss your old life? Yes. But I've never been conscious to think that. So I've never been bored or upset. Never been anything at all. Exactly the same as death. No dreams, even. Day and night, the same. When you miss your old life, you say, yes, I miss my old life. What do you miss? The fact that I was a musician and in love. He'll say things like, do you know what it's like? And that's really dangerous because if you... I actually did. I said yes at once because I was just saying yes. And, yeah, <laughs> that was disastrous. <laughs> I've never said that again since. Um, Why? Because he says, you don't know what it's like. How do you know? <laughs> of course, he's right, isn't he? <laughs> you know, so there's no way you're going to know what it's like. Um, so he's still got some fight in him. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that, that's the thing is probably three quarters of his personality is still there functioning normally. He will analyse what's happened. He says, well, the doctors must be very interested in this. You know, it's a very unusual case. He worked it all out over and over again because he doesn't really remember that he worked it out an hour ago. Deborah's done more for Dad than any other single person. And I very much doubt that I could have done that for him. And that's hard. That's very hard. I think I'd have given up. Yes. <laughs> when did you last see your father? I wouldn't like to say when it was, because I really can't remember. It's too hard. I wanted him to walk me down the aisle when I got married, and he couldn't. I wanted him to know that I'd had his grandchildren, and he couldn't. So he's, he's a lovely person. He's, he's Clive now. That's gone.
considering he's still one of the most amnesic people in the world, he's pretty peaceful. Considering he doesn't know where he is or what century it is, or where, well, what time he got up that morning, or, or that he's in a place where he lives. Considering all of that, his state of mind is extraordinarily calm, happy, content, and um, very much himself. He's himself. If you could do anything now, if you had free choice, what would you do next? I would gin and tonic, I think. <laughs> <laughs> With a cigarette. <laughs> And then, of course, waiting for time to elude and disappear and her arrival. Yeah.